Hi, this is Peter Teuscher. I'm here with Toby Demker. Thanks for joining us for another podcast where we pick a topic and see where the conversation takes us. We cover all kinds of topics from uh, personal development to professional development and um, a little bit of philosophy. And uh, hopefully we've got another good one for you today. How are you doing today, Toby? Things are good. <clears throat> Back into the swing of it after the summer holiday. So that's uh... It's, uh, I'm in a good state. Thank nice. You. I just yeah. uh, I was I went to see my naturopath this morning. High Plektika, they call it in German. Do you have a Swedish word for someone who's a alternative medicine therapist, something like that? Oh, um, I know what you mean, but yeah. Anyway, we were we're we're so much on the same wavelength that you know the first five six minutes of our of my appointment were spent on just talking about you know the kind of stuff we would talk about on the on the podcast so hmm. we're, we're clearly doing the right thing here because uh, I, I, I just can't get enough of talking about these things I guess <laughs> so um, yeah so I've got a topic for us today and it's one that's very um, very tied to the core of coaching uh, for me anyway um, and that is uh, I want to talk today about finding finding your potential and uh, I think my probably my highest aspiration as a coach is to help people find their own highest potential. So mm. uh, I think th that's um, hopefully a topic that's interesting for a lot of people. And I, and I think t today I'd really like to look at you know how to f how to find potential, but also f how to determine you know what's getting in the way, um, you know what's uh, what's making. Because I, I don't know if anybody fully lives to their potential. I mean, you can mm. see. <clears throat> you can see uh, professional athletes or artists or musicians that in a certain area they're you know they're very close to their full potential mm. um, whereas uh, but maybe in other parts of their life they're not so I think we have probably potential for just about anything uh, mm. where you know as we enter this life we have unlimited potential as we get older you know, there's some things that start to get limited. You know, if you want to be a professional athlete, you probably need to start as a kid learning the skills and mm -hmm. uh, developing uh, that talent. And um, same goes for a lot of other disciplines. Whereas, you know, when you're talking about career, there's people who have five, six, seven careers in their in their life. It's not just one. The, the you know, the idea that you stay with one company for your whole life from the time you get out of school or graduate college and whatever, do an apprenticeship and then uh, mm -hmm. work your way up into a company. I think those days are probably behind us. Um, so I think it's it's uh, it's an important thing to look at. And I know from my own experience Mm. Um, you know, I, I didn't really start my personal development journey until I was in my early 30s. So that's when I started, you know, reading, uh, you know, doing, you know, working through some of my issues, but also learning about a lot of um, personal development stuff, uh, listening to you know, or reading Wayne Dyer, uh, you know, there's some Tony Robbins stuff in there, all, all these things mm. I was exposed to at my in my early 30s. So one thing about it, if if I'd you know if I'd maybe had a mentor when I was a teenager or uh, you know who knows but at the same time I'm I'm happy with who I am now so mm. you know it's it's uh, you know I, I, it was the learning journey that I needed so I think there's no there's it's never too late to find your potential in life um, mm. you know barring you know the, something like where you're physically you know you physically need to be at the top of your at your peak, which you are in your twenties, right? So, um, mm. a professional athlete or some uh, professional musician or some of these things may, may, may uh, um, that type of potential may have a have a window of time. But I think everything else, we go through life with uh, with all kinds of potential to continue to grow and evolve and change. Mm. Whether you're in your your you know when you're whether you're in your sixties and seventies, I'm always intrigued by people who, as they retire go back to university and take a course, especially mm. philosophy or something like that, that they didn't dare do because they were going to university to learn it, to learn a, um, the skills to, to do a professional, a, a professional to learn a vocation. So I and, and I think that's one thing when people when young people are looking at, you know, what to do at university, university tends to be a, a fa unless you're going to be a doctor or an engineer, I guess, but, but for a lot of people, it's kind of a foundation of how to learn and um, how to organize yourself and just giving and try, figuring out who you are and what you want mm. in life. And so 
So I think um, I, I really encourage people if they don't if they're going to university and don't know exactly what they want to do with their life to you know just go ahead and, and be curious and be open and and mm. I think you'll find your your potential through through um, just some experimentation. You know, we talked mm. before about being curious. It's it's all uh, yeah. it's all important. What do you yeah, think? I, think uh, I mean, I, yeah, I totally agree. I think it's so true. This part of when you, especially when you, if we're doing career coaching or these kind of related to these kind of subjects, like what kind of career do you want to pursue? What do you want to become when you, when you grow up and those kind of conversations? But I mean, everybody nowadays, even though, even though, like the examples that you mentioned, that you become, a, you study to become a doctor or engineer. Even when you enter these fields, there's so many different opportunities and and, and ranges of different different stuff that, stuff that you can pursue. Even without that in that field, you can go into management. You can do go into research. You can go into practice. You can go into maybe marketing or business or whatever. I mean, there's no there's no limit to to the range of possibilities. Even if you enter a very very specialized kind of field, uh, and as the world develops, it's probably just going to become more and more. So I, I think it's 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 true, and it's really interesting to just have that kind of mindset when you enter an education or uh, any kind of profession like yeah this is a starting point but it's definitely the starting point just des- definitely doesn't equal the ending point right no exactly and i think that's probably the, the first uh point that i i really want to emphasize and get, get across to people is that you know you're you you have um you have all kinds of opportunities and all kinds of potential. Most of it undiscovered. At, at you know, at, at any point in your your life, there there will be a ton of things that, a ton of potential that you haven't discovered. And when I when I think about it, uh, what my I've been asked before, what, what's my greatest fear? And I think one of them for sure is is um, you know not achieving my full potential. And then as I as I was thinking about this podcast, I was thinking about that whole idea that well. Will I ever achieve my full potential in this in, mm. in one lifetime? Is that is that even possible? Right. So, mm. it's about you know fulfilling as much of your potential as you possibly can. And I think um, for some people that is you know being ultra focused on one thing their whole life. Um, and I, I I find it amazing that people say you know I knew as a kid that I wanted to do be an actor or be a doctor or be a veterinarian. Um, mm. And for me, that definitely wasn't the case. You know, I, I, it wasn't until I was doing my own personal development that I started to feel like, you know, and started talking to other people about it where I, I started to really, um, and, and then also doing the sports coaching where I started to really feel like, ah, this is something I, I really am passionate about and really would like to do. Not mm. only developing myself, but helping other people develop. And so, mm. So look, I I think I, that that idea and that goal wasn't fully realized until you know in my late thirties into my forties. Um, mm. So where where most people are already you know uh, fully into their careers, um, I I was you know rethinking life. So mm. so I think that's a really important point. It's never too late, and there's there's all kinds of potential even when you think that you know you're at a dead end. Yeah. And it's it's a little bit about how you define potential as well. Um, and I I really I I think most of us, especially you and I, we talk so much about athletes and <laughs> professional athletes, mm-hmm. and and it's an interesting metaphor to use because we're inspired by these individuals that that dedicate all of their time to become the best they poss- possible can in their field. Now, if it's athletes or if it, it's artists or if it's other professionals, I mean, a lot of researchers and doctors and a lot of professionals, they also dedicate all of their time to become the best they possibly can in their field because they enjoy it, but but also because they want to be the best. They really want to utilize that full potential that you're talking about, right? Um, for me personally, I don't work like that at all. Um, call it laziness or whatever, but I'm more of uh, looking for width in things. I, I can try different kind of stuff and I want to become good at a, a, a variety of things. And I'm, I haven't really specialized so much in, in certain things. And But I still want to be the best that I can be in uh, sort of overall, right? And ha- have this width of interest and width of... Uh, things that I'm competent to do. I still want to raise my competency in a lot of different levels. Um, but I, I mean, 
as an example, I just started training karate. I don't think I'm going to become the world champion of karate, and I'm fine with that, right? But of course, I want to pursue uh, as yeah, and become as good as I as I can right now. Yeah, absolutely, and I I think that's you know that's what I mean by the, it's it's really important to recognize, especially for people who are hyper specialized. Um, you know, whether you're, you know, we talked about the athletes, but in a professional sense, if you if your work is is uh, all consuming and you you are all the growth that comes in your life comes from your professional life, then then are you are you fully realizing your potential? Because uh, some other things will suffer, you know, your relationships mm. or your ability to, um, you know, if you're a scientist in the lab and you're an introvert, you know, what about your social skills or your, you know, maybe you have a, you have a hidden talent for, for singing or, or, or something that you've never explored. Um, mm. And, and so I think I, I'm like you, I've, you know, you know, my background, I've got a very diverse uh, history, um, tried a lot of different things. Um, and been really successful in some, less so in others. But you know, the 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 aggregate of all those experiences, I think, is what makes me a good uh, coach, a good trainer, a good, you know, all these different things that that uh, we're that we do, the work that we do in order to help people um, achieve their potential and develop. So, so yeah, I think that's that's an important mindset, important perspective to have on when you're asking yourself, well, what is my potential? Um, not to overlook things that, um, you know, we, we sometimes value the things that we develop based on how much money we can earn or how much recognition we can get. And I, I think there, there are, it's, you know, it, it, in order to bring balance into your life, recognizing that are, there are a lot of other things that are really fulfilling um, that that will also, you know, fulfill some of your potential. Mm. Um, I, I think about things that, um, you know, like I, I'd like to, I'm getting a, to a point in life where uh, I've been thinking about planting, I, I, you know, I'm not much one for a green thumb and I, I've never, mm. I like being in nature and I like uh, all of that, uh, but I've, I've never planted a garden, right? So this mm. year I'm growing some tomato plants. Um, but, uh, you know, just uh, seeing where I can take that, how I can develop my skills and what potential I have there. Um, and the, you know, the ability to be self-sufficient. We've, we've lost so much of this stuff because I mm. find I spend a ton of time, you know, listening to lectures, watching videos, reading books about personal development. Um, mm. And so if I get hyper focused on that, what, what am I giving up, right? Uh, mm. In order to, to to focus on my potential there, so so yeah, I think variety makes for a fuller life. Mm. Yeah, and it is, I'm just reflecting on what you're saying in, in our kind of position that it's I think it's quite common in our profession that we're looking for some kind of practical work to implement uh, all these kind of ideas in because it becomes very theoretical when you're in. Well, a bit philosophical, as you often mention, that you you have all these ideas and you're working with thoughts and theories and 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 different models. But then to really put it into practice with others is one thing because that's what we do. But but with yourself as, as well. So having an opportunity to implement different projects or plans or whatever, it's uh, I think it's important for our own sanity and our own development as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I guess so that first step in discovering your potential, I think being curious, um, trying different things, getting out of your comfort zone. Um, and, uh, you know, sure, it's great to be really passionate about one thing, but finding some balance and exploring other avenues and in, to broaden your horizons and, and, and look at where, where else can you grow? Where's the potential for you to fully develop, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about today was just looking at, um, you know, what are the kind of things that stand in the way of us achieving our our potential, right? Mm. So we can we can look at things from motivation, uh, you know, procrastination, and so on. We did a, a session on on um, uh, uh, self sabotage. I think a lot of that comes down to fear. I think fear is the bigger the biggest thing that undermines our potential. Um, I was th th I've I've there's a book from uh, Dr. Judy Ho who's who's talking talks about you know stop self sabotage is her is her book. But she talks about things in terms of, um, you know, we we're, we're 
her theory is we are motivated either by um, we we either want to diminish a threat or we want to uh, uh, you know attain a goal, right? So it's we want to achieve something or we want to avoid something. Um, there's different versions of that, I think, um, where you know we we hear about uh, or there are theories about well we we are trying to avoid discomfort, right? That's as a biological organism, uh, we, we, you know, the, the keeping that homeostasis so that we're, uh, because anytime there's change, there's danger, right? There's mm-hmm. risk and change and so on. So there are a few different ways of looking at that. But for me, it always comes back down to, uh, you know, the, the fear and, and fear, I think, you know, it manifests itself in different ways. So it's not just, well, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of getting hurt. I'm afraid of the these risks. There are a lot of things where that I think are fear based that we don't even realize that are that are unconscious. So mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to undermining our potential, it could be, you know, I'm a I'm afraid of, uh, you know, I'm afraid of uh, getting involved in this relationship. Or I'm afraid of going for this role at a job because you know I could fail or. Um, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of trying public speaking because I may make myself look like an idiot. <laughs> you know, there's the mm. feeling ridiculous kind of thing. And so those are all very much fear based. But I also think that when people are trying to control, seek power, um, trying to, you know, uh, um, you know, organize things in, in their way without le- instead of letting life flow, I think those two can be fear fear-based responses. So mm. when it comes to undermining our potential, when we get, uh, you know, when you recognize that you're insecure, you know, are you limiting the potential of your, and that, that's causing you to be jealous or, you know, um, envious or whatever, then then you, um, you know, how is that undermining the potential of your relationships? Or mm. what, what are the habits that you have? What are the beliefs that you have that are fear-based that are undermining your potential to achieve your own highest you know, uh, you know, version of yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think I've, um, I think I've, I've mentioned that many, many times in our, our series of conversations already about uh, uh, false assumptions and 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 how that can be an obstacle for your uh, for your yeah for your development. I mean, when we're talking about adult uh, development, that we all have our false assumptions or our fears like what if, what's going to happen if I do this, or what's going to happen if I don't do this. Uh, and there's a concern there that we, that if we make these choices, that it's it's a discomfort and it's uncomfortable and and it doesn't. And if we cling on to these false assumptions, I mean, obviously that's going to have an, a, um, a detrimental effect on our possibilities or our potential or our development. So yeah, for sure. To to realizing, you know, what do I have to let go of to to let come, and. A lot of theories now are talking about that kind of change. If it's develop, I mean, individual change or even for organizations, that what do we have to let go of to let come? And especially if we don't see, we, we talk a lot about purpose and, and sort of forward looking and goal. But if, if that's not even clear, and then the, that fear of what the future is going to bring might be even bigger. So then it becomes even more difficult to let go of what's keeping us in our structures and providing our comfort and stuff. So letting go of that, that can be even more difficult in these kind of situations. I guess. Absolutely. And so uh, I think that's the first thing to be aware of is, is fear at play? Uh, and how is it, is it manifesting in my actions? Or in, do I f- see it in my beliefs? And then, you know, then it's time to, you know, ask those, ask some questions like the, the Greek philosophers did, you know, they, 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 in their rhetoric, they, they were questioning, you know, these, is this so? And, and, mm. and Byron Katie does this in, in what she calls the work, and, and she does it more in a therapeutic, self-healing kind of way, uh, where, you know, you, you're looking at these thoughts that you have and these beliefs that you have, and you're, you're asking yourself, is this true, you know? Mm. Um, and how do I know this is true? And, mm. you know, what would I do if this wasn't true sort of thing? And w- when you're when you're doing all that questioning, questioning those assumptions, then you can start to recognize where fear has kind of led you into erroneous beliefs that, you know, aren't um, aren't really helping you. So um, I think for me, that, that's been a big part of my own personal journey. And in the work that I do uh, coaching people is, you know, helping them develop their own 
a more positive philosophy. So we, we, you know, we've created this philosophy in our whole life, which we may not call a philosophy, but there's these set of beliefs that we've adopted and, and, and um, kind of put together in, in a life view. And, and uh, I think when you can, when you, we, we don't often take the time to review that and check, check to make sure that, mm. you know, all, all these things still make sense or all, all, all of these beliefs are still supporting us. So I mm. think that's an, another thing to, to check, as you say, check those assumptions. And for me, part of that process of checking the beliefs and assumptions is finding out where fear is, is, is driving uh, a lot of those things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 also comes back to that challenging part. I mean, you, you you just mentioned the the individual perspectives, but for organizations as, as well, as, and especially to challenge, like, what if we scrap this process? What if what if we just didn't do this? Uh, and yeah, why are we doing this? Um, I have meeting meetings, and I guess most of us have those kind of meetings, and and all of a sudden someone questions like. Well, do we have to do this at all? And I was like, well, maybe not. You get so so accustomed to the idea that this is important that you miss kind of other things. So you're missing out on opportunities just to sticking on to staring at this one particular object all the time. Yeah, and I think that's a that's an important part of change or understanding what do I need to change in order to fully achieve my potential, because we you know whether it's you know, and, and I think we can look at this from a professional or business perspective as well as a personal one. From mm. a personal perspective, you know, we, we develop these strategies and well, well, assumptions, but then strategies for how to deal with situations in life at a young age. And we try to reapply those later. And um, even though they're not successful, we keep doing them because they've become a habit, you know. Mm. Um, or, you know, one of my favorite examples is, you know, well, someone will will um you know I'll either observe or someone will tell me about some manager that that just flips out whenever when things go wrong and just just loses it has a temper tantrum and 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 I can just imagine that person as a as a child you know in the grocery store not getting what they want you know mm. with their parents and then on the floor hammering their fists up and 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 that those kind of outbursts getting them what they want and they and then people try and translate that in, into into other um, other things, and then from a from a sort of a professional or, or business uh, standpoint, you're exactly right. People people get so stuck in ways of doing things, and there's a there's a a, a book by Marshall Goldberg, I Gold, think. Goldsmith. Goldsmith. Uh, yeah. The what got you here won't get you there. Yeah, I think so. I think, sorry, I, I, I apologize that I've butchered his, his name. But um, it's been a while since I read the book. But, you know, he, he talks about exactly those things. You see it with people who, uh, in these startups, right, these startup organizations where you have to be very agile and you, you wear a lot of hats and, you, you know, you get, you're very into the operative, operational day-to-day. -day. And you see it with managers who've, you know, who uh, maybe in their first management role still have to be very operational. And then they struggle to let go of, uh, you know, the, the hands on stuff as they they uh, as they get older. And so mm. all of these things that you, you know, that these these strategies that you've put together in order to be successful, you know, put into different contexts will no longer work for you. So in order mm. to achieve your full potential, it's 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 time to rethink strategies and take different approaches and try new things and that's hard to do yeah. because the things that we've been successful with we like to stick with right and and then we yeah. we don't recognize how it's no longer applicable or it no longer fits to the current situation yeah so that's and uh, and to that argument that's why it's so important to have this curiosity and openness to, to be willing to try new stuff and and to realize that if we want to move even fur further, what yeah, what got us here isn't going to take us there either. And um, I know Anders Ericsson, um, he, he I, I read a book by him called Peak, I think it was called. And it's really interesting how he describes that the uh, the importance of feedback loops in the, in your development. So to constantly checking, you know, what what is what is making you better. And if you have. If you if you use the the athlete metaphor again, if we're thinking about a, an athlete with great potential that's working really hard, if you if he has um, if he or she has a trainer looking at the same things over and over again, it's only going to get you that far. 
but then you need other kind of feedback and looking from at things from other kind of perspectives. So, oh, well, uh, if if one is a is an expert on footwork, you know, the other might the other one might be an expert on on tactics or something, and you need all the whole package to be to be able to develop. Right. So, seeking. Um, what he's really emphasizing is seeking different kinds of feedbacks and, and have that constant feedback loop. So get to understand what do you have to work on and what you're good at and, and, and work on that even harder. So utilize those kind of strengths. Yeah. But also what is also interesting with him, I think, is he's kind of downplaying the emphasis of talent. Mm. Uh, which if we look at strength-based leadership and a lot of the these theories in, in uh, positive psychology, it's very much about the, the, the talent and, and utilize your talent and your strengths. And if, to, if you develop them further, that's going to be kind of your, your leverage for your further development. And might be true, but he... But there is a little bit of difference in thought here that Erickson really stresses this, the, 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 the effort and the feedback effort to um, that talent is actually it's important, but less important. Yeah, it's important uh, in mindset as well. I mean, that's Carol Dweck's work there on, on mindset. Mm. If we instill in our kids at a young age that, you know, um, if you uh, if you work to develop certain skills, you know, you will get really good at them, whereas people who, who say I'm not good at that I'm not good at that and they and they um they 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 have this mindset that I have certain talents and I don't have others and th that will that's like it's almost like it's genetically programmed in me mm. naturally some people are born with um uh, foundational skills and or certain interests I think when you have a passion or an interest in something you're you're bound to get good at it because you're yeah. You know, you you're uh, you, you're it's it's a natural motivator to, to to do more of that, and and I think uh, that this is getting back to you know Mihai Chiksett Mihai's work on on flow. You know, he talks a lot about the, the things that that really engage us. You know, that mm. that that really uh, that we become really passionate about. We lose ourselves in them, and then we you know we get we, we that's how we let go of the fear, and that's how we mm. let go of the the boundaries when you when you talk about uh, you know athletes being in the zone or when when artists really where their 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 art just flows from them it's it's not even about the talent it's about the removing the obstacles and and mm -hmm. this is why you know for finding your potential is so important is how do i remove those obstacles that are in the way of my potential and, and a lot of times we are our own biggest obstacle right so mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's the fear it's the beliefs we've developed it's these these mindsets where we think, well, <clears throat> this is my talent, this is my lane, or or whatever, and um, I don't think we'll ever be sure of what we're capable of in, until we try, right? And mm. if we can have that mindset of, uh, that you know, I, I don't know how to do that yet, right? But I, mm. I can I can learn, you know, if it interests me, I can learn and I can mm. I can grow. Yeah, yeah and that I, I'm also. I'm always fascinated by where these kind of false assumptions can come from, right? And I think all of us as adults or teachers or whatever, we have such a big impact on people. We can say something wrong, and then all of a sudden we can give an individual the idea that he or she is not good at something or does, does not have the potential. And it might not be true at all. And then this, this kind of false assumption is just in, inflicted on them and they, it sticks with them until something else happens. So we need to be... Uh, aware and cautious about this, I think. I mean, as um, I'm thinking as a football coach, for instance, you know, what what can I say? What can I not say? How can I sort of unleash the potential in in the players rather than yeah, if, initiating any kind of false assumptions that they're not capable of doing something because you know, it's you know, it's such an important role to play. Yeah, I think what you were talking about before is also interesting. The <clears throat> what you measure is what you change, right? And um, so, uh, so in the workplace, that we we sometimes will measure only certain types of performance or things we can quantify, but we we don't measure development in terms of uh, some some soft skills sometimes or um, achievements in you know in development in areas that aren't specifically performance related but contribute to the performance. And the same thing goes for. In individual, uh, in, in our individual lives, we look at, you know, where we want, where we've gotten success. We want more of that, and we mm -hmm. also tend 
to, you know, uh, look at context. We compare ourselves to others, right? We, where am I versus someone else? And so rather than looking at, you know, how much I've developed and, you know, each of us is on our own journey. So, you know, if, if I think about <clears throat> someone who started playing basketball when they were five years old, uh, got a ball put in their hands, whereas, you know, I, di I didn't start playing until I was a teenager. If, uh, you know, if I'm going to compare myself to that person, you know, that that's, that's not a relevant context. But if I look at, you know, how I developed, I, you know, I, I think for the couple of years that I played in high school and then uh, and then for fun after that, it wasn't until I, you know, at the end of my 20s when I started coaching basketball that I really started to understand the game. Um, and I apologize if there's people who are really not sports fans that we always tend to mm -hmm. relate to, to sports, but you can relate that to, to anything. If I if I started playing piano, uh, you know, as an, as a young adult, and and I compare myself to somebody who's had piano lessons since they were four, mm -hmm. you know, is that you know is that a fair comparison? So it's it's the races with yourself and how far you've come from who you were yesterday, and so the same goes for your potential. If you, I, I remember uh, when when the TED talks first came out, and mm -hmm. um, I, I would see these people who were younger than me who'd achieved all this all these things that you know I was aspiring to do but they've already done them and you know they're younger than me and I was trying to compare myself and and then you know you look at the bio and you see that the journey they've taken you know, I I didn't get into this field until much later and and mm. so all I can do is look at where have I come from and and uh and then that will help me hopefully see more of my own potential rather than going Oh look, you know, I've they're way younger than me. They've achieved way more. Maybe I should just give it up because mm. you know I'll never be as good as them, right? Mm. And and yeah. so these are the this is the inner dialogue that we sometimes have that undermines our potential is when we're comparing ourselves to other people and we're measuring ourselves in ways that you know aren't aren't really fair or not com aren't are not completely uh, reflective of our potential. Whether it's what yeah. we're measuring at work or uh, in our in our private endeavors and our personal growth. Yeah, and that yeah, and it's, uh, it's so important to look at our individual potential and our individual journeys because not no one's going to be the other like, you know. In we, it's it's just what what are you interested in developing? What are you interested in? What's motivating you for for your kind of potential? So we're all we're all different and unique in that way, and there's so there's no use whatsoever to compare with anybody else. Uh, but really having a clarity around that for your own sake, what kind of potential might I have? What do I want to develop? You know, and that that doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. Yeah, I mean, if you th look at someone who, who has a passion for music and writing songs, and especially, you know, now just a young person getting into that, think about how many millions of songs that have been written. And, and mm. if you're just going to say to yourself, well, I, you know, they've all been written. It's not like, you know, th th all the hit songs are just three chords anyway. So, you know, how many more versions of, of that can I do? And yet people still strive to express themselves through music and through art. Mm. I mean, you, you could say that it's all been done. It's all been tried before. But if you take that approach and I could say the same thing, you know, we're doing this podcast there's, there's, uh, you know, how many people out there that have, you know, that are doctor so and so or have all this experience that, um, you know, what do we, what do I have to contribute? And, and I think, well, you know, I've got my unique life experience and I've got my passion and I've got all these things that I think that, well, I, I do have things that I can contribute and I do have things uh, to offer that, you know, that may, maybe somebody who's had a different journey will not have the same perspective. So I think mm. we all have a unique perspective in the world and we all have something to contribute. And if we can take life with that approach, you're going to see more of your own potential. Yeah. And and also on, on the theme of, of looking at others, I also want to emphasize that I think it's great when we can get inspired by other individuals and that we can learn from other individuals. Um, but it's not the same thing as becoming another individual, right? I mean, if I look at, um, let's take any kind of guitar hero, if I look at Ingrid Malmsteen, if I copy Ingrid Malmsteen's chops and learn to do that like, the, just as good as he he, uh, he does, I might become a really good copy of Ingrid Malmsteen, but it doesn't have anything to do with me, right? 
but I can learn to uh, where maybe perhaps his approach of playing and his tone, and I can utilize that and brand it into my own sound or my own journey or whatever you want to call it. That's inspiring and to, to learn from others, but it's not the same as copying in, in anybody else. So I don't have to compare with others. Just what can I learn from others? That's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different kind of question. Yeah. It's funny because you, you chose a more metal kind of uh, guitarist, <laughs> uh, you know, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani or whatever. Well, let's say Pete Matheny then. Yeah. And, and uh, or, or um, you know, you go way back and if you, if you have someone who's listening to like Robert Johnson or, or, or Jimmy Page or Jimi mm-hmm. Hendrix or, you know, these legendary guitar players, if, if you look at that, if you look at a Jimi Hendrix who was like a genius right and 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 you go well you know i'll never compare to that so why why like people who are who who achieve their potential don't aren't limited by you know the are or aren't intimidated because someone else is already better than anybody else or better than they think they could ever be i mean imagine someone who is a sparring pianist thinks well you know, I'll, Mozart did it all. I'll never, or Bach, or whoever. I'll never be there, right? And so, so these these comparisons just aren't helpful. And I, I think when you are passionate and interested in something, it doesn't matter what anybody else has done. And you know, I, I'm, I, I probably won't ever earn the money or make the reach the amount of people that a, that Tony Robbins has. With, you know, I, I think he started in, as a late teenager, early twenties. Um, in his, uh, you know, doing the stuff to, to work to, to, you know, giving his courses and so on. So he's been doing it ages. And if mm. I was going to say, you know, I'll, I'll never reach that many people or, or have that much of an impact, why would that deter me from exploring my own potential and what I can do in this, in this field, right? Mm. Or whatever field you, you, you want to pursue. Yeah, exactly. The, the, mm. When I think about, uh, I really love to write, right? So I, I spent uh, 10 years uh, writing a blog, more than 10 years, uh, and it really helped me develop my, my writing skills. And, mm. uh, and so I may never, uh, you know, win the Pulitzer Prize uh, for, you know, for a novel or anything. But, um, you know, it, it, the, the fact is, and th- this goes back to what, when we talked about motivation and, and Dan Pink's, you know, the three pillars, one of them mm. being mastery. And th- it's that whole road to mastery, just just constantly developing and getting good at something. I think mm. when we have that uh, approach to, you know, I just want to see how far I can take this. I just want to mm. see how far I can develop myself. Uh, I think that's when you start to uncover, you know, um, the potential. And 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 that that is pushing through your comfort zones. When you when you think about, um, you know, for me, I'm not a long distance runner. I, I don't think that the the incentive to continually improve my time or uh, get longer endurance would would motivate me. But look, at my age, I'm still playing competitive basketball. And I'm still trying to improve my shot and trying to figure out ways to you know adopt new techniques from the game and so on. Mm. Uh, and uh, you know, what does it matter? I'm not going to change the world. I'm not going to you know uh, do anything groundbreaking by improving my basketball skills. But mm. I think. All of those things, they continue to develop who the potential of who I am as a human being, right? Mm. Yeah. Now look a lot of, I think, especially in the field of, of medicine, I, it, and well, maybe in most kind of research, it seems like so many people that uh, maybe have had have been researching a certain topic their whole lives and they've been working on it, and then when they retire, they still can't, they they can't can't stop, right? They still need to. How can how for how far can I pursue this? You know. And, yeah. Um, I think that's a wonderful kind of statement of uh, the motivation to to pursue your your own potential. I think, uh, it's a, yeah, and I think that's a mistake we make in not only human potential, but in in the potential for for change and 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 uh, creating a better world. When I think about it, you know, so I've been I mentioned at the beginning that I I was just went to see my naturopath, and you know, there's things I'll go to my doctor for, and luckily I'm really healthy, so I rarely have to go to the doctor or any kind of a health professional. But but some things I'll go for my doctor for, and some things I'll go to um, you know my uh, my naturopath. Sometimes I'll go to a physiotherapist if I injured myself. And mm. the thing is, I, when I first came to Hamburg. I had a really, uh, I had, I had a, uh, um, 
a really painful condition in my back. And the, you know, I went to uh, the orthopedist, that's who the, my house doctor recommended me, and I, I went there, and the guy couldn't uh, do anything. So after one or two sessions, he just put injections to take the pain away, and even that didn't help. And mm-hmm. so in parallel, I went to see, for the, my house doctor also recommended alternatively this naturopath. And so she diagnosed me with a nerve infection in my in, in one of my discs, and she said, "Here's some," and she gave me some natural thing. And and within, I'd say, a week to ten days, it, it completely cleared up and went away. And I had this for months, and it was really debilitating pain. Mm. And whereas the orthopedists, you know, uh, took X-rays, did everything they could do. Um, and, and when I told this, this guy that I was also seeing, uh, you know, I think it's important when you're, you know, getting two different treatments that you inform the, the, the doctor that you've made that mm. move so that they, they have the full view and have transparency. But his response was, I should stop, I should stop treating you because that's just quackery. That doesn't, you know, and, and so he, he was so judgmental about, you know, so about, about what this could do. And yet the things that he tried to offer me didn't help. If I had a, a strain in my hamstring or I had an injury, I'm sure he would have, or or there was some kind of pronation in my foot where I walked, and I'm sure he could have helped me a lot. But in this case, my naturopath had the better solution. So mm. why don't you take a holistic, why, why can't you look at everyone's potential contribution? I think this is when we, when we look at human potential and where we could go and we have these assumptions where we ex- exclude certain possibilities or solutions because of our assumptions about them i think that's where we limit the human potential of where we can go right well we we would just say and and you know fair enough there are people in that field of natural medicine who it you know it, it is uh maybe some quackery or they haven't really you know been properly accredited so i think you 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 need to do your own research but i think there are good people who take different approaches to solving all kinds of problems and to say there's only one right way to do things limits the potential of what we can achieve. Hmm. Again, it comes back to that open mind, open hearts, uh, let go to let come. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, and of course it's, I, I understand that when you're, when, when you're brought up in a school or a system and process and you've been dedicating your whole life to, to this is the set of rules. And then maybe you're having sort of a, some kind of competition with others. I understand that that's the, that's a natural reaction. Um, but still it, uh, and maybe that illustrates that how difficult it can be to, to be open-minded sometimes. And, um, the, the, and there has to be some kind of limitations to our, to our uh, open-mindedness as well. Right? Otherwise, everything might just be uh, conspiracy, conspiracy theories, or whatever, right? So it's, I guess it's a judgment call as well. Yeah, and I think there, look, we, we can take from the things that we've learned and, and, and pursue the paths that are going to lead us, more likely lead us to the, the outcome. But if the tried and true methods aren't getting in a city where, you know, I, I've recently found out that Einstein didn't say the the the, the whole quote about uh, you know doing the same thing the the definition of insanity, you know doing yeah. the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. That's he never said that. And, and yeah. apparently that that that's not exactly what he said. Or it, 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 he's not the one who said it. There's there's tons of quotes out there from from yeah. everyone from Gandhi to the Buddha, who <laughs> who they prescribe uh, quotes to. So even there, do your own research. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, 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 that's true. You know, if we we sometimes, you know, we work in systems, whether, you know, when you want to talk about politics or things like that, and, and we see that they're not working, and yet we continue to try to do things the same way. And I think that undermines our human potential, our potential as, uh, as a society for what we could achieve, because we're so stuck in one way of doing things, whether it's a certain, you know, uh, ideas about economics or uh, the way politics should work or, you know, um, and look, when we look back to the, um, you know, the, the health crisis we've just had, uh, you know, for the last two years, um, and, and I guess maybe in some cases we still do, if you look at, look at China, apparently we still do, but, mm. it, you know, th- this is one of the discouraging things that uh, when I, when I, uh, when I look now, now there's, you know, it's okay to talk about different 
um, perspectives on what happened. And I found for a while there, there was so much fear that um, there was only one right way to look at things. And people were called names or quacks or like even uh, people who were considered up to that point, you know, leaders and experts in their field were now being called fringe because they didn't agree with a certain narrative. And I think mm. th that those kind of approaches under my, if we don't have healthy debate and we don't have discussions uh, and we don't um, consider, and I, we don't have to consider all the possibilities. I don't need to consider whether or not the earth is flat, right? I mean, and I don't want to offend anyone. If you believe the world's flat and that works for you, fine. But, um, you know, I, I think that, um, that, that I th th when we limit ourselves to just one worldview or one way, and this is what we talked about before about diversity, right? It's the diversity mm -hmm. of ideas that will come up with the better solutions. And, um, and so I think approaches like that, like there's only one right way to do things, uh, that limits our potential as well. Yeah, for sure. And there's for sure a lot of topics that we are not allowed to sort of touch upon. I mean, mm. um, I have I, I have an acquaintance who he wrote about uh, you know what's what other options are there beyond democracy and that's a big no no for most people that's yeah. not something that you're you're willing to to discuss right so uh, yeah it can be can be very difficult. But uh, we were talking about potential. Where did we go off on a? We may have gone off track, but I, <laughs> I I was looking at the things that limit our potential, and so mm. you know because we've talked about our individual potential, uh, our professional potential, and I I was just we kind of <laughs> flowed into this human potential. I, I hadn't even thought of it in, in about talking in those terms, talking about it in those terms before we, we um, start the conversation. It, but it's, yeah, but it's relevant. I mean, to to what might be. <clears throat> sort of an obstacle of our potential and that yeah. might be that this part about yeah how open are we to to other ideas or to to other possibilities or to to other potential of of things that we don't know yet yeah because yeah. i think motivated reasoning and bias they will you know they will steer us down these particular paths and not necessarily to our highest potential and so it, it's always checking your your fears your assumptions you know your biases, uh, and and making sure they are they are you're open enough uh, to to be able to see the full potential or the best solutions um, that maybe we haven't even tried yet. And so, mm. I think you can apply that to your individual life, to your organization, or you know to society as a whole, right? Mm. So, um, yeah, and I I think so. We okay. We've covered a lot. Um, I, I do want to remind people that self sabotage is a real thing, that mm. that uh, that affects everyone to some degree. If you procrastinate, that's a form of self sabotage. Uh, um, I think procrastination is a big one when it comes to um, our our own potential because um, it tends to be. Uh, you know, it used to be people thought procrastination is a form of laziness. And mm. I, I personally don't believe in laziness. I think, you know, it's a lack of motivation. And then the question is, okay, what's undermining my motivation, right? Um, yeah. So so I think that undermines potential. So, I th th it, you know, by all means, check out. You, um, I think she, uh, Dr. Judy Ho does a few. She's got a few interviews you can look up online. Um, mm. And she's got a book. Uh, I, I found it. And she's not like... Um, I don't know how popular she is in the U.S., but I, I just kind of stumbled across her work. Um, but I think th that's an important one because a lot of people, when it comes to their own potential, they're, they are their own biggest obstacle, right? So mm. so there's yeah. the self-sabotage piece is, is one that I, I want to really underline in, in, in this discussion about uh, potential. What about you? Mm. Any, any other things that you see as, you know, glaringly obvious obstacles to, uh, to, to finding potential? Uh, not obstacles. I was thinking more about implementation, uh, and you know, what are the th what are some things that we can do to bring us closer to, to our, our 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 potential, our full potential. And I'm, obviously, I mean, if I relate to what I talked about before, that that is Ericsson's ideas about these feedback loops, and uh, to make sure that we have people around us that can give us you know, honest and, and, and good feedback of how we can develop further. And one way is to have a coach. I mean, we have conversations about these things. That's helping me just taking courses and, and being being curious. Um, but understand that you, 
that it's necessary to have some kind of feedback process to look back at how what am I doing what's in what direction am I going am I developing you know how am I doing that and so so looking forward but then also looking back what's what's bringing me me forward um, and then for me it's really about I I love this topic about curiosity to be open to tr- try new things to be willing to learn new stuff and um, as I, as I, I mean, that fits me individually. That I'm kind of into to the width of things, and maybe not so much the depth um, uh, to a certain degree. But um, yeah, I've heard, I've heard the saying, uh, you know, do something every day that scares you, right? Um, yeah. So, okay, if th- that's one approach, that's one way of looking at it. Um, and I, I, you know, you could do something every day that challenges you just a little bit, right? Um, and I think that as we, the older we get, the more we get into our comfort zones and, um, and then it becomes hard to, to motivate yourself, right? Um, mm. we, we live very comfortable lives, at least in the part of the world we live in. Uh, and I'm super grateful for that. But I think if anything, we living comfortable lives, uh, need to strive even more to, to continue to evolve and, and meet our potential because, you know, um, I, I wonder you know, there there are those who who uh, theorize that that we are our IQs are have peaked and we're we're going down again. And mm-hmm. you know, I I don't I don't know if I fully agree with I don't know if I agree with that at all. But um, it, when you see you know because we just have so much access to visually see what the, the mistakes people make or the dumb things that they do and say because it's all recorded it's all online mm-hmm. now and and so maybe it, it seems like um you know the the we are we're getting dumber not smarter but but i think that's not the case i think we continue to evolve and grow whether we realize it or not it depends on you know who we compare ourselves to and and you know th- i think there's always been people who just are ignorant of the facts or who just haven't had the same learning opportunities. And if we use them as an example or the benchmark for humanity, it may seem like humanity is not that bright. Or some of the outcomes, you know, because of the, the, the direction that we, we were taking, whether it's the environment or war in the world, it, it seems like we, we just don't learn or we just don't grow. Mm. And I think those those are very complex issues that, um, there aren't easy solutions for, and some of the sort of natural tendencies we have t- to tribalism, to you know, to to fear, to um, you know, d- to trying to seek power so we have more control uh, to overcome our fears. I think th- those are those are things that we're not going to solve, uh, you know, in, in in short time. But I think we've come a long way. So mm. in terms of you know the, achieving humanity's potential, I think we've we have come a long way, not without mistakes but then we hopefully learn from our mistakes right I, we we talk about in organizations mm. failure culture and 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 having enough trust to allow people to make mistakes i think mm. that we have to also uh, we as much as we focus on and this is what the news is so great at telling us what's wrong in the world i think mm. we also need to if we're going to still believe in our own potential i think it's important for us to recognize we are making progress. That's why I love to watch like TED Talks or some of these other where you see, yeah, there's people out there I've never heard of before that are actually finding solutions on how to clean the ocean or alternative mm. fuels or, or um, you know, healing trauma or, you know, whatever it is out there. So mm. I think balancing off uh, um, because I, if we if we start to develop uh, a negative mindset, and we only see negative, we become apathetic and we start to feel like there's no hope uh, of change of you know improving and then then our then our potential is really lost so mm. um, so yeah so I, I I encourage people to keep a positive mindset be optimistic be hopeful mm. I think those things are also really important if we're going to you know a, as a as a species achieve our potential not just our individual pot- potential because it's all interrelated we're all interdependent right mm. For sure, yeah. Interesting. That is some 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 food for thought. I mean, it's I've been thinking recently a lot about also the sort of some of the system changes that we need. But I I I really do agree that we are uh, developing as species. We are learning from each generation to another. It, some, very often it doesn't seem like it, and people always say that oh we don't never learn from history. 
Um, but as a historian, I really think that we do learn a lot from history. We're avoiding a lot of the mistakes that we did before, and it's not, e not easy to change, but uh, we're, we're doing it. No. And also, each each generation is kind of, that's the luxury of each generation. The old generation can, can sort of blame the younger generation for being so stupid and lazy. And the younger generation also always have the opportunity to blame the older generation for being the same. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that's that's very true. And I wonder if that's part of our social construct because, you know, it used to be um, when you look at indigenous people or, or people, you know, our, our forefathers, we, we lived in small groups and, you know, children weren't raised by just two parents. They were raised by a tribe. And uh, and and I, I think that the the values and the, the way of doing things naturally we've had have other advantages um you know the scientific method and we w you know we're we're more rational but just being rational isn't always you know we've maybe lost some of our social skills and all some of the it, being in tune with the natural world we we may have lost through some of that I, it's not not a claim i'm making i'm just saying there are mm. pros and pros and cons and i think that that um, when we we used to respect our elders and and um, think we could learn things from them, and th that was not always a good thing either. Just to sort of take ad hoc or take everything verbatim that we get from the older generation was not good either. Uh, but now it's kind of the because we've got a technologically advancing world that change that's ever changing. The 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 older generation. Is becoming out of touch with, or, or, or you know, with with current reality, and mm. then we get these young up and coming pe who think I've got nothing to learn from you, old old guy, mm. or you know, um, th this kind of thing where we 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 think that be, you know we're on the cutting edge, we have all the new knowledge, we don't need any of that old stuff. So it's about finding balance of retaining the wisdom of the past, and and um, embrace being curious and, and and embracing change and being willing to adapt. To the future and and you know being in tune with with the now, so mm. I think all of those qualities are important. And if we go to lean too much in one way, we'll you know will impact our potential for change, and we'll make mistakes that are you know generations before made because we've forgotten them, uh, and so on. So mm. I think when we look at society's potential for improvement, we still have a long way to go. We still have mm. racism out there. We still have. Uh, you know, well, obviously we still have war. Uh, so there's, it doesn't mean that we don't have a long way still to go. But I, like I, like you say, I think that we've come a long way and that should give us the hope to continue to pursue our, pursue our potential for change and betterment. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's finish on a positive note. Yeah, yeah it's I was going to say the same thing. I think that's a great place to 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 finish things up. And um, so, yeah, if you've stuck with us this far, thanks so much for for listening. I hope I hope this is conversations giving you some insights on on or even some inspiration and motivation on on potential and trying things to you know to to um, achieve your potential in maybe areas you hadn't thought of and um, what you're doing to contribute to um, the potential of society, right? I think all of those things are important, individual, organizational, and, you know, cultural. Um, we all make a contribution. So, um, yeah, if we work together, we can all find our own highest potential. <laughs> all right, Toby, thanks for that conversation. Um, yeah, thanks, Peter. Very and um, yeah, it's your turn next. I look forward to the topic you come up with. And for everyone listening, thanks for joining us again. And um, hope you're hope you're working your way to finding your full potential. Thanks very mm. much. Have a great day. See ya.